So welcome back friends. I have a very exciting video for you guys today. We're going to be starting the van conversion. We're going to be building the bed out of aluminum, but also I'm going to show you a new tool that I just found that has changed my life. Goodness, we have so much to talk about, I don't even know where to start. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna be building is we're going to be building a bed, a full queen size, or almost a near queen size bed, uh, that will be, what's really wonderful about the Ford Transit van is that these indentations for the windows here. That's what makes it different from the Sprinter, is you cannot, if you're a tall guy, you cannot sleep sideways. You have to have your bed run front to back you lose an inch, an inch and a half of feet. So, I mean, that makes a huge difference. This, by utilizing these bump outs, I come out to a full six foot seven, if I remember right, so we can sleep sideways. Huge, huge thing. So I spent many, many an hour scratching my head trying to figure out how to do a bed system. Here's what it needed to be. It needed to be very light, needed to be very strong. It needed to be removable without any tools in less than, than two minutes. <laughs> That's an arbitrary number. So what I came up with is, is we're doing the frame rails right now, is going to be a three panel bed system with spring clips, all made out of boxed aluminum, all welded. It's gonna be very, very skookum. And also be able to remove it. So we can take it out, add it in. If we wanted, you know, that way we're not tying up the van. Our old van, we had a huge bed in there that was a big per permanent monolith and it rendered the van pretty much unusable. If you wanted to go pick up a refrigerator or maybe it was raining, you wanted to go to Home Depot and get some drywall and you didn't want to get all wet, a van is really nice for those type of things. So this is, uh, this is kind of where we started. So I'll show you, I've got one side done, show you what I did, and then we'll do the second side together. So this piece of aluminum is the foundation of the whole bed system. And it's, it'll come clear earlier, but it's gonna be a track system where the bed will fit over this and then pin into it. So our biggest challenge is how to mount this securely, properly. We're, I want to, everything to be factory quality. I don't want to have a bunch of stuff rolling around if we have an accident or a collision or something that hurts or kills you know, members or occupants in the family. So everything, I want it to be done very, very nicely and, and I want to have that peace of mind. So what I did was I used a tool uh, that I have never heard of before until recently I started doing some searching and it's called a Rivnut tool right here. This one's made by Astro, it's a 1442. It is a fabulous, fabulous tool. It is similar to a pop rivet gun in that, well, I'll let me show you. Let me take this off here and I'll show you exactly how it works. All right, check it out. These are the Rivnuts installed right here. Now in the past when we had kind of shade tree, you got your shade tree van type of guys, when you wanted to mount something to a van like this, you've got two panels on the wall, right? They just run a self tapper through there. See, the problem is, is you can't, if you're mounting panels and you have upholstery and stuff, or cabinets, you can't get your arm back there and, and hold on to a nut. So they just run self tappers in there, which were, I mean, it kind of works, but man, they're not very strong. And if something, you know, happens or an accident, all that stuff's gonna come loose. And it's just, it's just not at all proper uh, as far as, I, as, far as I, I'm, I'm concerned. So here we have a factory. So this is the way the factory does it. You know, they have these, they've got these things inserted in here. They're very strong. You can thread stuff in there. They're built into the body. Well, we can't do that, right? We don't have the option of things already built. So this is the solution. This is the rivnet. And what it is, it's similar to a pop rivet that we would drill a hole, insert this, and then use a special tool. And when everything is said and done, it crimps it. You can see there's a before and then there's one that's crimped and it crimps it very, very tightly around that sheet metal. And you can see all of the texture on there. It holds like nobody's business. I mean, they really are excellent. Cadmium plated. And then of course, for all of our fasteners, I'll be using button head 5 16 stainless steel. Practically everything in this conversion is gonna have to be custom made. I mean, just things you just cannot buy. They just don't, well, they do exist. So I was looking into, when I was looking at this bed, and I was kind of figuring, you know, what it was gonna to take to build it. And I thought, boy, that is gonna be a, a ton of work, hours of figuring. So I searched around, is there something available that's, you know, maybe a reasonable price that's already made? Do you know what it costs to have for a, an aluminum bed like this? It's going to be maybe as good as this one, um, $3,000, $3,000. I saw that and I thought, nope, nope. I can, 
I can uh, do better than that for a fraction of the price. So where we started was this is a piece of um, eighth inch aluminum that I went down to the local machine shop and uh, the guy, we did it together, he had a big metal break in a shear and we were able to bend this at this particular shape to custom fit what this application I have here. So it's two inches and it has a, about a three quarter inch bend in it and then it's two and a half and that gets my mattress up to the right height. It just works perfect. Man, I went over and over and over this so many times to get this measurement right and I couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. I'm really blessed to have such a good local fabricating shop that uh, was able to take the time and to help me with that because it just was not, wasn't something I could do myself. Before we drill our holes, we're going to have to really be careful and double check everywhere where we're going to want to put our rivet nuts here. We're looking for single layers, hopefully not double layers that's going to cause problems or wiring or air, who knows, airbags, fuel lines, whatever's behind there. And so what I'm doing is I'm just taking a pencil and I'm just marking here. This is the little detent right there where that aluminum, I had it broke to fit right around that. And I could just come in here and just get, I could get two rib nuts here and here. So the rail's temporarily clamped on. You can see right there, that detent there and how that nicely that fits in there. That really helps me to get a reference. So everything's really consistent with both sides. And now we can start doing our pilot holes for our first two rib nuts. We're ready to drill our first hole. Now, be sure you use a center punch. These spring-loaded center punches right here, we use these for breaking, breaking glass, the fire department as well, are really wonderful. We're going to put a center punch on there, or use the center punch on there so that our drill bit doesn't wander around because these screws are going to be exposed once we get the upholstery on. And we want to, that everything to be looking nice and uniform. For a pilot hole, we're going to start with an 8-inch drill bit. Next, we'll use a quarter inch. Now, here's a little trick. Make sure you use a drill stopper, a drill guide. This is just one I made out of a piece of half inch PEX pipe. So we've got two layers here, but the outer skin's right there. As you're pressing on a drill bit, it will pull and it'll go through. You have your weight behind it and you'll put a big dent or worse <laughs> in right on your bodywork on the outside that'll just break your heart. So by doing this, it will prevent that uh, from going all the way through. Now we can take our clamps off and our rail, and then we're going to have to drill the steel side, the body side, a little bit bigger hole uh, for the riv nut. Now it's very, very important that we deburr -bur this. I've got this hole actually a little bit tight, so when I do deburr it, it's, it, it's not too big for the riv nut. We've got uh, shavings on here. If we feel on the back side, we can feel really jagged metal sticking out. If we don't remove that deburring, that will sit up and this rib nut won't pinch properly and it'll spin. And nothing will ruin, make you sadder than when you try to tighten some up and something up and the rib nut spins because you didn't deburr it. You can use a rat tail file like this to do it. There's deburring, little deburring tools. What I found to be best if you have a die grinder is just to quickly hit it with this. Then I'll just finish off with a little triangle file and just kind of work that around there and knock, knock those edges off, making sure that there's no, no burrs sticking out. It's going to give us trouble. Now, because this metal's not super thick, all the force of the drill bit will have a tendency to kind of, you know, pull it a little bit, kind of, I don't know, it's not really flat. It's kind of a little, tweaks it out a little bit. Let's take a, a little, uh, what do you call these? It's a body tool. I can't, can't think of the name of it right there. Uh, put some weight behind there and just tap that with a body hammer to make sure that it's nice and flat like it was from the factory. Now, after we deburr it, we'll see that our rivnet will fit in there just perfectly. That is nice. Before we install that rib net, we've got to deal with the raw metal. We don't have any coating on there. It's raw metal. It's going to rust. You know, we have Pacific Ocean here. We'll often, you know, be going there for weekends, and we don't want that to be a problem. So I've just taken a little a funnel. It's just a little paint strainer. You can get it uh, super cheap at uh, paint supply stores for automotive stuff. I'm just using it just basically as a little catch right there, or a little shielding for my spray. I just do a little spray primer in there like that. And then this just 
prevents it from, you know, getting too much overspray all over the place. This is okay. This is all going to be behind upholstery, so I'm not overly concerned about it. Primer's dry. We are ready. This is the cool part. <laughs> I love this tool. So um, this is the, what I say, Astro, Astro 1442. And what it does is it comes with different size mandrels. 5 16 is the biggest that this one will do. And because we're going to be uh, have you know multiple people up here on the bed we want it to be strong so that's why I'm using the, the bigger bolts do yourself a favor you should have some of this stuff in your shop the anti-seize lubricant this is high temp but I don't know exactly what it is I think this one has some copper in it but what happens with when you're using stainless steel bolts is they will gall and once they gall you'll never get them out and you'll strip off the head and then you'll have to take a, I mean, you don't even want that. This is a tiny preventative measure that you can use on it. On, and, now, and I'm using it on the tool as well. Anytime I have a tool that has a thread on it that's gonna be used and used and used over again, like this, this 5 16 mandrel, you know, these will change here to different, whatever size you want. I put that on there, it just, it, re, it makes things work a lot better and it, it really protects the threads. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just like a pop rivet gun, we're gonna open this guy all the way, right? Make sure that's backed out. And then we're gonna insert it. And then we're gonna press very tightly until the handles come together, open it again. And we should be able to do this. I've been doing it in two poles. Tighten that up till it comes into contact and then close the handles. Now, we can kind of straighten it a little bit. Just unscrew this. This is where the anti-seize really comes in handy um, to help that back out there. Back this out. And there we have a like factory mounting point without a nut on the back. Isn't that cool? We'll do the same thing on the D pillar here. Now the reason why we're gonna install two of these in is because we want to secure the rail and then we can drill the pilot holes for all the other ones. It's gonna give us a much better chance of having our riv nuts perfectly lined up like we want. This is a fabulous, fabulous tool. I'll put a link uh, to this in the, I'll pin it to the top comment and put it in the description uh, where you can get one of these. I am beyond excited for this project. Man, I have, you guys are really going to enjoy this. I have got, I found technology <laughs> and uh, got things coming up that I didn't even know existed from this fascinating on-demand water system built uh, in Germany uh, from lithium batteries to, uh, it's just going to be, it's, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. All right. Well, if you'd like to follow this series, uh, I invite you to subscribe. Don't forget to click the thumbs up. And uh, we always appreciate your comments. And uh, we'll finish up these rails on the next part. So we'll see you guys on the next video.